it's time to finish putting this quadcopter together and get it into the air. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Final assembly and maiden of the JB Xylo Budget Build 2022 edition. If you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, this is part of a video series where I show you how to build this exact quadcopter. Video number one is linked down in the video description. Uh, in the meantime, I assume that's why you're here. Let's get into it. And the first thing we got to do is like secure all this stuff. We can't have this stuff just flapping around while the quadcopter is flying. Number one, because it'll get damaged. And number two, because anything flapping around and banging will cause vibrations that'll affect the gyro and will make problems. And the capacitor, I know how to deal with because I've done this before. I've built this frame before. A camera plate is going to go here. And then the capacitor will just kind of fit in here and zip tie to a hole in the camera plate. So we'll get to that in just a second after we get the camera done. In fact, I think the camera is the next thing we got to do because the receiver is also going to tuck into this spot and we can't do any of that until we know where the camera is going to be. Fine. Next, we're going to grab these two camera plates and you'll notice there are several different ways you could mount the camera. Um, different cameras have different styles of mounting, so there's two different sets of mounting holes. The camera that we have has just a single screw hole uh, and so we're going to use that to mount it and we're going to mount it in this diagonal slit here. Well, I just went to put this M2 screw in that came with the frame and I felt the tiniest bit of resistance as I was screwing it in. And if you ever experience that, stop. You're about to drive a screw into the circuit board inside your camera. Instead, I'm gonna look in the accessories that came with the camera. There was this little baggie of accessories and let's see if there isn't something in there we can work with. Like, yes, a much shorter screw. Let's try that. All right, so here we go, in the diagonal. Yes, that's gonna be just fine there. And again, notice, plug side up, pay attention, get it right. Put one of the side plates on upside down. Gee, many Christmas. No demonetization for swearing on this channel, kids. <laughs> I still got it wrong because you can see it slides forward and back, and as it slides forward, it goes downward. And you can see down here, it would get it would touch the bottom plate and not be able to tilt. I've still got it backwards. I've done it wrong. Wow, I am really demonstrating uh, the wrong way to do this as an exercise for you so you don't have to go through the same struggle. The plug is on the top and it can kind of shuffle a little. Let's put it in place and see how it's gonna work. Next, I want you to get the long standoffs and we're gonna use these two screws, the length of which I'm not 100% sure what it is, but there's two of them and hopefully you'll find them. <coughs> Looks like they're about eight millimeters maybe, maybe eight millimeters. And we're gonna install the two front standoffs. And the reason for this is I wanna see how the camera lens is gonna interact with the front standoffs. You generally want your camera lens to not protrude too much past the front standoffs because that will help protect it if you get into a frontal impact. If you, you know, if you get a lucky hit, you're going to bust your camera lens pretty much no matter what you do. But you don't want to stick it out too much, but you don't want it sitting too far back because if the camera is too far behind the front standoffs, then it, you'll see the front standoffs in the camera and that's not ideal. So now that those two front standoffs are installed, we can uh, use these one, two, three, four little slots to mount the camera plates. And that looks pretty good to me. It's sticking just a little out in front, so we won't see those standoffs, but it's sticking out minimally. And so hopefully, and we can actually scooch that back a little bit and we can fine tune that once we've got the system set up, but it'll go back or forth just a little, but that's pretty close to correct. I think I'm okay. I'm comfortable proceeding. I'm thinking about mounting the receiver. I gotta say, it's probably not the best idea to put the receiver in, in a, just a, basically a box of carbon fiber. That's gonna reduce its range somewhat. I'm still gonna do it 
because it's such a good place to, it's just such a, it's where the room is. And I think that especially if you're running 50 hertz, you'll have plenty of range uh, on Express LRS. Uh, but if you notice that your range is not as good as you might hope, you see that L, that LQ number starting to drop, you might end up rearranging that receiver somewhere else on the quad. Like, I guess the back near the video transmitter is the place to be, although I don't love that either. We've got plenty of room in there, though, for the receiver. We've got plenty of room. So, double-sided sticky tape. And I want to be real careful when you're pushing this down. You want to kind of wiggle it a little to get this tape to stick, but you don't want to break that ceramic antenna. And then the capacitor is going to come down in here. Plenty of room there. Love it. I'm just going to loosely secure this zip tie and then stuff this down in here. I'm going to pull that tight. I think I'm going to use this hole here because if I use this one, it'll just pull it too high and it'll come off. And if I use this hole, it'll slide down and pull it low and come off. So I think we're going to use that hole. Just making this up as we go, folks. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We can just pass that. Can we just pass that out here. Let's see how that's going to work. I'll just have that done loosely and then kind of squeeze it through and we'll drop this down in there and cinch it tight we'll see how that goes mm, seems pretty good see nothing's in the way I mean nothing's pressed up against each other or banging into each other it's all sort of tucked in there it's nice and secure and as we fly and flip and roll and it's not gonna go flying around the other thing I want you to check is that none of these wires are pinched in between any of this carbon. Everything is free. You don't have any wires like wrapped around a standoff or anything that's going to get tugged or snagged. Make sure that that's not happening. Next, we're going to get these M3 by 6 millimeter screws and we're going to put the rear standoffs on. And if you are paying attention, you may be wondering why we used eight millimeter screws for the front standoffs and six millimeter screws for the rear standoffs. And the reason is that the front takes harder hits. You'll be slamming in in the front, whereas you won't be slamming in in the rear as often. So we add a little bit more uh, strength there. The other thing that you'll see is that the rear plate is two and a half millimeter carbon and the front plate is three millimeter carbon. If you pull out a caliper, you'll see that that's true. And that's for the same reason. The front plate is heavier because it's gonna take more impacts. There's another thing I would like you to do, and that is we're gonna put a zip tie around this XT60 cable, and we're gonna tie it to that standoff. And the reason for that is that if the battery ejects in a crash and goes flying, we don't want the battery to tug on the ESC. The ESC solder pads can be ripped off in an impact. Uh, and so if we add this zip tie here, then that will take some of that stress and keep us from, uh, help save the ESC perhaps. I always put strain relief on my XT60 cable for that reason. Probably flip that zip tie the other way so it goes up. Next, we're gonna mount this antenna and we'll go ahead and remove it from this, uh, this is called an SMA connector. And we are gonna need this little baggie here with these two, I guess they look like maybe four millimeter screws and two nuts, two M3 nuts. And we're gonna be working with this 3D printed piece. I am not sure at this moment in time which 3D printed pieces the kit will come with. I assume it's gonna come with either an analog one or a DJI one, depending on which kit you purchased. Uh, there may also be a Thingiverse album where you can print your own. I don't 100% know that at this exact time. So if there is such a thing, I'll put a link down in the video description. What you're gonna do though is pass that through the hole in the print. Frankly, this is gonna be easier if I just pop it off the... And it, once it's pushed all the way through, it can rotate into position. Don't uh, don't twist on the cable 
like I, I just did, and it, it wasn't good that I did that. Don't twist on the cable as it can be damaged, but we're going to line up the two screw holes in the SMA connector with the two holes here. We're just going to drive those down in through the TPU and through the connector. Well, I'm sorry to say I'm a little confused right this minute. I am really certain that these screws can't be for anything else on this build other than this SMA connector. But the SMA connector that I have got has much smaller screw holes on it, almost like they're drilled for an M2, not for an M2 point. They are, they're M2 holes, not M2.5. Um, I think that what has happened is that they s didn't have the kit ready for me in time for me to shoot this video and they sent me an analog video transmitter uh, just that they pulled off the shelf and it doesn't have the same UFL, con uh, the same SMA connector that you're going to get and that's why it's not threaded correctly for my screws. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get these spare M2 screws and these spare M2 washers that came with my camera and I'm just going to use them but I believe that your, your antenna connector will have drilled out M3 holes that this screw will pass through and this nut will go on the backside to secure it. That's not what's happening to me today. I mean, really, this build has gone incredibly smoothly so far. I appear to have is a threaded M2 hole. And that's I've, I've literally never seen that before on one of these uh, pigtails, to be honest with you. At the end of the day, you are going to end up with your SMA connector screwed to your TPU. And this is what you want so that it doesn't twist when you put the antenna on. You can tighten this antenna down. Only finger tighten the antenna. Don't uh, don't wrench tighten it because uh, it's, it's easy to break. But I mean, it's not like easy to break, but if you go in with a wrench, you absolutely can strip it. And what you're going to want to do is tighten that down until you cannot easily twist the antenna here. If I loosen it slightly, you see how I can twist it? Even though this nut at the end is stable, I can still twist it. You're going to want to twist that and tighten it. There you go. And you might be thinking, well, just twist it until it's tight. But sometimes with the TPU 3D print, you can't get it all the way tight. It feels like it's tight, but it's just pressed up against the 3D print. It's not actually fully tightened down. And then with the antenna facing up, we're going to come back in here and we're just going to press this down over the top of the standoff and it'll stretch and press down. And that's where that's going to go. And then we'll come back and we can plug this back in again. That's not ideal. Just look at that sticking up there. I don't like that. You never want to have a sharp kink in a coaxial cable, so that's no good either. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's not a sharp kink, exactly. Next, we grab the top plate. It's going to go on with the Lumineer logo up. Uh, it does have a top side. The top screw holes are countersunk, so you would do, definitely do want to put that on the correct way around. And we'll get those camera tabs. You may need to kind of push them or wiggle them a little bit to get them to seat. And then we're going to grab these countersunk screws and they're going to go one, two, three, four in the back. And then we've got these, uh, I guess they're four millimeter uh, M3 screws and they're going to go one, two, three, four on the front. And if you do have a 3D printed GoPro mount or something, then uh, you could install that instead. I just felt this front standoff rotate when I was tightening down the screws, and that's because I forgot to tighten down the, the bottom screws. Definitely make another pass over this as you're wrapping up, and just sort of double check that the screws are snug. If you've been lock tightening as you go, you should be in pretty good shape, but it never hurts to check. Don't go crazy. Don't strip anything out. Be a gorilla. I don't love that. I don't love how close that prop is getting to that XT60 lead. So let's see if we can redo that zip tie some other way. Like closer to the top of the standoff and make it twist so that it pulls it up instead of pulling it down into the back. That's good. I also want to make sure it's not rubbing up against the flight controller 
Like I said, nothing should be touching the flight controller. That's going to be in. And if we go back and look at the prop, we can see now we got a lot more clearance, and that wire isn't going to want to go anywhere near that prop. At least that's what we would hope. We're going to get this battery pad. Uh, the purpose of this battery pad is twofold. Number one, it uh, keeps the battery from digging into the screws. Uh, now that's uh, not a problem on this frame because this frame has uh, countersunk screws so they're flush with the top plate. The other thing it does is it provides some grip so that the battery doesn't slide forward or backward in an impact. Keeps the battery from going places. And let's take a look at the camera and see if we can see the standoffs. No, so I've pushed the camera as far back as it will go and I don't see the standoffs in it. If I bring it forward, don't see the standoffs. So I'm gonna push the camera as far back as it will go in this mount. The other thing I'm gonna do is give the camera some up tilt. And the reason for that is that if the camera is perfectly flat, perfectly flat and looking straight forward, then when you pitch the quad forward to begin flying, then you'll be looking at the ground. So you give the camera, I think a good place to start is about 20 degrees, maybe 15 or 20 degrees of up tilt, just eyeball it. You could use the clinometer app on your phone if you're so inclined, but about 15 or 20 degrees of up tilt for a beginner is a good place to start. I'm gonna just dial in that up tilt and then I'm gonna cinch down on these screws. You may find after a hard crash that that angle changes a little bit. I just, uh, just go in there and put it back how it was. Oh no, that's holding pretty tight. Well, you see right here, you can see the frame just a little bit once I dial in that up tilt. So let's move it forward. I'm just gonna wiggle the camera forward just a smidge to fix that. And that, folks, is a fully finished FPV quadcopter. We have only one thing left to do. That's put the props on and maiden it. And that's going to be in the next video in the playlist, which is linked down in the video description, or I'll put a card on screen to the whole playlist and when the video is out, the actual video itself. I'll see you there.